name is Dr. Samia Latif and I'm a consultant uh, in communicable disease control. Coronavirus is a family of viruses, um, but this particular novel coronavirus 2019 is a new virus from that family. Um, it has crossed over from animals into humans and it's the first time we're seeing this infection, which is why we don't know too much about it. But what we do know is that it is a virus that is spread uh, it's um, through um, through droplet infection. So when we sneeze or cough or speak, the droplets in in the moisture in in our speech and in our sneeze and in our cough can infect someone else. So it's spread through droplet infection. These droplets can also land on a hard surface, and if your hands touch that surface, and then if your hands go near your nose or mouth, um, that's how you can catch this infection. So it's a viral infection that is spread through the droplets in your cough, sneeze or in your speech. So how can we, um, how can we prevent ourselves from getting the infection? So basically there are three main elements to the preventive aspect of this disease. The first thing is what we call hand hygiene. The second thing is respiratory hygiene and the third thing is physical distancing, also known as social distancing. I do prefer the term physical distancing. Right, hand hygiene. This is by far the most important measure you can take and we are encouraging everyone in the population to make sure that you clean your hands properly. So using soap and warm water is the best way to wash your hands and keep them clean. Um, wash your hands for 20 seconds. So you give, them, give your hands a good thorough wash with warm water and soap. If you don't have warm water and soap, you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer or gel. Uh, however, soap and water are by far the best way to keep your hands clean because our hands um, touch different surfaces and um, there, there's more of a chance of getting our hands uh, contaminated with the virus and then we bring the hands near our nose or mouth and we can breathe in the virus. So keep your hands clean. The second thing I mentioned was respiratory hygiene. So what is respiratory hygiene? If you have a cold, if you have cold-like symptoms or you've developed a cough, whether or not it's coronavirus, if you've got these symptoms, please use a tissue paper to catch your cough into your tissue paper and catch your sneeze into the tissue paper and then bin the tissue paper. Um, so make sure that you are not sneezing or coughing into the open air where the virus can then sort of land on other people or on hard surfaces. So good respiratory hygiene, use a tissue paper to catch your sneeze and to catch your cough and then wash your hands afterwards and bin the tissue paper. So that is good respiratory hygiene. So the last thing I mentioned was physical distancing. Uh, it's also called social distancing and what that really means is to try and avoid, other than your family living in the same house as yourself, try and avoid um, mixing uh, with large crowds Try and avoid using public transport, um, stay away from crowded places, gatherings, avoid gatherings of family, um, larger families and friends. So, so maintain that distance, but that's not to say that you can't go out for a walk. You can go out for a walk. Just be careful that you're about a few meters away from, from other people. So that's roughly about three steps away from the next person. Um, try not to go where there are lots of people or crowded supermarkets, stay away from them. Um, if you can order your groceries online, order that. If you need to go into the shops, just try and go when it's slightly less busy or stay away, don't go too near other people. So that is physical distancing. I don't call it social distancing because you can still keep in touch with your family and your friends through all the various social media apps we have. At, you can FaceTime them, you can WhatsApp them, you can Skype them, you can use Viber. There's so many ways you can pick up the phone. So do keep in touch with your family and friends. You don't need to socially isolate yourself that way, but you do need to physically distance yourself from family and friends. So avoid going out um, unless it's necessary. Um, most people have been advised to work from home. Avoid crowded places, avoid using public transport. So that is physical distancing. Coronavirus causes 
for the majority of people it, it does cause a mild infection and you do recover yourself at home but for some people such as the elderly who are over 70 or those who have other existing conditions like heart disease, kidney disease or lung disease or who are uh, patients on chemotherapy or on immune um, who are in, whose immunity is very low um, those people uh, it it can become more serious and you can go on to develop pneumonia and you may need admission in hospital if you were to develop a fever over 37.8 degrees centigrade or a new persistent cough that means you should have several episodes of cough during the day or a long bout of coughing. Uh, so a new persistent continued cough, fever, and those are the two main symptoms to look out for. You do get other symptoms as well. You could get um, chronic fatigue, muscle ache, body ache, headache, a runny nose, um, and sometimes um, nausea as well. However, the, the main things to look out for are the fever, and or a new cough. If you have any of any of these or either of these, you need to isolate. We have stopped testing everyone in the community for this because we are assuming that the infection is out there. So you need to take some precautions. If you think you have developed these symptoms, you need to isolate yourself. If you live alone, you need to isolate yourself for seven days from the day that your symptoms started. You can come out of isolation at the end of seven days, provided you have not had a fever in the last two days and you, and you, you feel well in yourself. If you live with a family, you need to isolate for seven days, but your family needs to isolate for 14 days. That is because it takes a while to be sure that the virus hasn't infected any other family members and for them to develop the signs and symptoms so for family members in a household we're talking about close family members who live in the same household um, you need to isolate yourself from for 14 days from the start of symptoms of the person in your family who's got the illness the person who gets the infection themselves can come out of isolation after seven days, provided they are feeling well and they've not had a fever in the last two days. What to do from a mental health aspect, because um, these are quite worrying times for a lot of people. There is a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of misinformation out there. Um, so I I would always, I always say to my friends and my family members, please verify the authenticity of what you receive on social media because there is a lot of scaremongering going out there and a lot of inaccurate information so please verify the information especially before you transfer it onwards or share it with others do verify the information um, so what can you do from a mental health aspect um, i think the important thing is to maintain some sort of a structure to your day as we know the schools have closed so kids are going to be home and mums are going to be extra busy and parents are quite busy, um, some are working from home, you're, you have your childcare responsibilities, try and establish some sort of a structure to your day because um, structure and routine does help. Um, do ensure you all get enough exercise. Um, you can go for a walk, You can pl uh, the kids can play in the garden. If you go for a walk outside, just be sure that you maintain that distance of two meters or more from other people. Um, do get some fresh air, um, keep your house well ventilated. Um, eat a healthy diet and uh, drink lots of fluid and, and use this opportunity to do something constructive in, in the extra time that you have. So uh, you can do family bonding activities, you can um, sort of uh, do puzzles, learn, learn a new language, do something constructive rather than watching television or news all the time, which is, which is quite worrying for a lot of people. So try and do something constructive, read a book, listen to music, do something you enjoy meditate, pray, learn a new dua, learn a new prayer. Use this time to reconnect with, with your family and your friends socially, um, over social media, not, not in person, um, but use this time constructively and, and that helps. Do not isolate yourself um, socially from other people. Um, so keep in touch, but keep in touch virtually so that you can use, we have so many ways that we can keep in touch with each other nowadays. So, so maintain that spirit. Also look out for each other. 
um, if you've got elderly or vulnerable neighbours, um, look out for them, drop them a message, um, ask them if they need any shopping done and drop it outside their house for them. So look out for one another, check up on one another and um, hopefully together we shall um, overcome this.